Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So a subject that actually comes up in quite a lot of discussions in the comments, uh, under videos, and just generally out there on the internet and in the real world, um, is this differentiation between civilian and military in application to certain weapons. And uh, recently we were looking at the Cinque Deus in um, the Wallace collection with Tobias Capwell, and uh, a common point that comes up is that um, Oh, those don't look like military weapons or things are too ornate uh, to look like military weapons or people look at things like small swords and rapiers and say oh well you know they're very narrow I can see how they might be suited towards dueling um, but you know I wouldn't carry that in war and for me this often comes back to the point that when we're talking about things like knives and um, swords and things like this um, they are sidearms, okay? And often what a civilian wears in their everyday life, in their civilian life, when they become a soldier, and remember that most soldiers throughout most of history, until about the 17th century, um, were predominantly civilians who were forced into becoming soldiers by either their government or uh, defending their area or whatever. So they were, or they may have indeed just gone to do that as a, as a job essentially for a short period of time for the campaigning season or in some cases it may have just simply been um, a matter of, of necessity that, that a load of civilians, you know, if we look at something like the um, American War of Independence, a lot of civilians basically have a shared political view and so they band together into something like a militia to serve the side that they want to fight for and they go and fight. Um, and the point is that they take whatever sidearms they happen to own in civilian life with them. So for example, in to use again the example of the American Revolutionary Wars, very often um, officers did carry small swords and yes, the small sword isn't really designed as a weapon of war. The guard is a bit too flimsy, the blade is fairly short, you can only thrust with it and it's very very light, it's not very good at dealing with um, bayonets or pikes or things like this, um, uh, uh, but you know it is nevertheless a pointy object that you can wear very easily. And this is the main point, is that these things, these civilian sidearms are sidearms, okay? If you go to war, um, then your main weapon is going to be something more like this, a big spear or a pole weapon or a firearm or a crossbow or a bow or something like this. So the majority of soldiers, when you're acting as a soldier, are going to be either fighting with um, firearms of various kinds, be they bows or muskets or rifles or whatever, with bayonets um, if that's applicable, or they're going to be pole weapons of some kind like this. And um, that's what soldiers predominantly use. What they wear at their side is a backup weapon. Um, and backup weapons, frankly, for most of history, um, certainly with militias and, and people who were civilians quickly raised to act as soldiers, uh, and certainly if we look back at the medieval and renaissance period where there wasn't really any regulation of, of weapons as, as such, or at least not on a widespread scale, um, the people in charge, the generals or the king or the parliament or whoever was in charge of the army, didn't really care for the most part, what was carried as a backup sidearm. So even if we look at the um, Amer American Civil War, US Civil War, um, we can see that uh, both North and South forces often carried things like Bowie knives or revolvers as backup weapons, but that wasn't their primary weapon. Usually their primary weapon was a, a rifle or a carbine, um, but they were welcome to carry uh, a knife if they wanted to and the government didn't care what kind of or the confederate states didn't care what kind of knife they carried usually it was a bowie knife of course at that time famously the d guard um, bowie knife was carried by um, southern forces uh, to some extent it's certainly shown in photographs of, of soldiers from the south and um, you know equally if we look at the cinque Dea, it's quite likely that whilst the cinque Dea is predominantly a civilian sidearm that yeah, they were probably worn occasionally by people who were serving as halberdiers or musketeers or whatever in the 16th century. It's inevitable. Um, so anything that's carried in civilian life, even if it's the what seems like a completely specialised dueling weapon, such as the small sword, 
will find its way onto a battlefield. We see this again in the English Civil War where we know that rapiers were um, worn and carried by both cavalry and infantry in some cases. Um, certainly later in the wars it seems that there was a gradual shift towards the greater wearing of things like hangers, which is a, a hanger being a type of falchion, um, and uh, broadswords and backswords, mortuary hilted swords, things like this, which are probably better suited to the battlefield. Um, but nevertheless, if you have a bunch of guys who are coming from civilian life in, into military life and you're giving them their, their primary weapon, you give them their, their um, spear or their halberd or their musket, then they will wear whatever they have available, uh, available to them as a backup weapon. So it might be a rapier or a small sword or a chinquadair or a bowie knife. So there we go guys, don't always think about uh, weapons in the context of this is a military weapon, this is a civilian weapon, because very often civilian weapons found their way onto the battlefield through necessity or habit. Cheers folks! Thank you for watching, please subscribe and feel free to follow us on Facebook.